What's up guys, I'm Dark Dally, and this week's custom Ghost Recon Wildlands character build and loadout is the American Gun Enthusiast. Homegrown and trained in militia tactics, this proud American patriot is the mixed martial arts of combat scenarios. Unidad Gasoline Convoy, cartel opposition with a machine gun nest, a floating cocaine laboratory with no point of entry, he's got an app for that. Each weapon in his arsenal is handpicked from his gun locker back home, and he makes sure that one of them is always the right tool for the job. He's a walking Swiss army knife with a 12 gauge attachment. The American gun enthusiast is where the Boy Scouts got their motto. Back home, he hunts a deer, but now here in Bolivia, it's cartel a true, clear, and present danger to the safety of his own country. He knows how to be silent on the hunt, and he definitely knows how to bring the noise and rain some pain when he's the one being hunted. The Americans personally customized Sega 12 shotgun make sure of that. This Kalashnikov-based slug thrower may have been barely classified as appropriate for hunting back home, but here in Bolivia, it truly turns the hunted into the hunter. the primary blade in his knife? It's his pride and joy. The American's handmade AR-15 carbine assault rifle. Sporting a digital 4X scope, medium length carbine barrel, suppressor and more, you could say this weapon tops his resume of silent kills. Add to that his deadly USP silence pistol and he has every tool he needs for CQB, medium range engagement and some good old fashioned American cowboy action. Military, militia, guerrilla tactics, his playbook is extensive. Never underestimate an American doomsday prepper with this big a toolbox and this many explosives. What's up guys and welcome to the All-American Gun Enthusiast Build. I hope you enjoyed the little intro video there. I want to show a little bit about how the gun enthusiast operates. Now I want to tell you all the, I'm going to give you all the details, the clothing, the gear, the loadout, the tactics, the skills you want and everything like that. First, there's a couple things I want to say. New patch just came out today, fixes some stuff. For one, it fixes the one thing you guys know has bugged me, the damn whisper pistol. Finally, like two months after they released the whisper pistol, they fix it so now that it's actually silent. So I can't wait to do that. But of course, as you guys know, as many of you know, my internet connection is really slow. So I won't have any updates on the new um, this new patch until tomorrow the next day it also introduces this new leveling system which is sounds interesting so we'll have to look into that when it comes out one other thing i want to say um so we do we've been doing build week this is the culmination of build week right here this is the character we've been building all week thanks to your guys' input i put this character together you guys suggested the clothes the weapons i threw in some tactics we got it all built and it's really cool and there was no builds. There was no day seven video. That's because I literally spent all day and night yesterday working on it, and I decided it would be better to put out after I put this build video because what day seven is, it's the entire making of this video, or at least the first two minutes of this video that you just saw, and it's a really interesting video if you, if you want to see some behind the scenes stuff. It's a little over an hour long, but it shows as much as you know of the editing process as I could squeeze in there. I think it should be really interesting and educational if you guys want to check that out. But I wanted to show you the video first, then I'll show you the making of. All right, so let's get to the American Gun Enthusiast. This character, probably from Texas or some fairly conservative state in the US where guns are common, you can pretty much buy anything you want. And you pretty much can't hear where I live. You can't buy the 30 round magazines here in Colorado though. So I figure, okay, so the Gun Enthusiast is probably from Texas. You figure uh, they're likely a veteran, maybe part of some militia group, and let's just say that they're down here in Bolivia on safari to do a little real-life target practice. Now, there's a few things uh, I want to go over about the character them in themselves, a few more things. So we, we kind of get the idea. We got a, a real hardcore American patriot gun enthusiast down here to uh, do their thing in Bolivia. Now, <clears throat> one, one comment I do want to address, someone commented on a recent video about my weapon paint and how they didn't like how it was scratched and I should renew it. That's actually one thing that I always do. Whenever I make a new build, and I think this is a really cool, immersive kind of RP thing, whenever I make a new character, whenever I make a new build, I freshen all the paint on the weapons. And then that way, the weapons wear as I use the build and it feels realistic. 
These weapons were new when I started this build, but remember, I do a lot, a lot, a lot of playing these builds that you guys don't see. I can't show you all the hours of play that I do. So I, I respect that comment, and yes, I absolutely do do that, and I've always wanted to mention it and never got around to it. It's a really cool idea for immersion. Say you swap to a new gun, repaint it, and then it feels like you're using it and it's wearing as you use it, and it's always a very, very cool idea. So let's get to the aspects that make the American gun enthusiast who he is. First, let's have a look at let's have a look at uh, at the gear, and when I say gear, I mean the outfit. Now, you guys had a hand in absolutely every single bit of this. Why did I <laughs> for tattoos? Um, it was decided I didn't get a lot of input, but I did get some input on tattoos, and I decided this right here. This looks like something a veteran would have. But uh, aside from the stars and stripes tattoo, which didn't work out with this because it's short sleeves and it covers the flag part of it, this was the most American tattoo I could find of. So we, we, we can say that this particular character was a veteran. This is definitely a very veteran style tattoo. So we have this here on the left arm. For the right arm, you can use whatever you want. I have my sapper tattoo. It's what this character always runs. Now let's have a look at the clothes. For the top, I went with the t-shirt. There's a lot of debate over the clothes. We went back and forth. If you guys have watched Build Week, then you know. And if you haven't, check it out. It's his own dedicated playlist. It's right on the front page of my YouTube channel under Ghost Recon Wildlands content. There's an entire playlist of all the videos from Build Week. You can see how much back and forth we did on the clothes. We ended up with the t-shirt and I went with this Cryptic Mandrake camo. I wanted this character to have a sportsman feel. All this is, everything this character is equipped with, you could 100% buy here in the US. And that's, that's one touch of authenticity I really wanted to keep. Of course, you can get any kind of camo, but this feels like something you'd get at a sporting goods store, and that's why I like it. It has a, it has a, an, an, a less military feel to it. That's why I used the Cryptek Mandrake camo on the t-shirt. We chose the t-shirt well. We went back and forth a lot, and that's what we ended up with. So many of these shirts won't take camo. When I wanted a hunter-style camo, so that's what we went with on the shirt. For the vest, I simply chose a nice lightweight Molly harness. It really looks best with the t-shirt. This is definitely something you can pick it up at any military surplus store vest like this. For pants, I went with cargo. I wanted something loose and baggy. I had suggestions for jeans, but someone with any combat knowledge would want something loose and baggy with some extra pockets if they were gonna go into a combat situation. I chose this particular camo. I chose the, uh, the ATAX AU. I chose it because it's camo, but it also kind of looks dirty. I didn't want them to look like they were like wearing like clean, like khaki trousers. I wanted them to look a little dirty. And this camo does that and also provides camouflage, right? Shoes really don't matter. I chose the hiking shoes. Now let's have a look at the accessories. Again, we went back and forth a lot. I chose the Oakley straight jacket fire sunglasses. Now these come with a deluxe edition. If you don't have the deluxe edition, you can actually just use the regular straight jacket. This, these are the ones I was using till I got the deluxe edition. And I just really like that orange kind of glare on the, on the lenses that, that look kind of cool. Now the bandana is totally optional. I wear that bandana because when I talk in my videos, my character talks with me and seeing her mouth moving is annoying. So I usually keep her face covered, but as it happens, I don't think this bandana looks half bad. If you don't have this unlocked, there's several other choices you can choose for colors. That right there actually looks pretty good. For the hat, went back and forth a lot. I really decided a backwards hat is the best. And thanks to a viewer suggestion, I decided to go ahead and match it to the shirt with the same Cryptek Mandrake camouflage. The backwards hat, I just, like, again, I went back and forth a lot. And in my opinion, it just really looks the best. It says the most American. Now, okay, like, you know, how do you say America? Well, you would say America with a cowboy hat, but that's too over the top. Uh, and a forwards hat just looked too formal. It looked too uh, too clean cut. I wanted to go with something that uh, if I were to go to the firing range and meet up with my buddies there, at least one of us is probably going to be wearing sunglasses and a backwards hat. So I figured, well, what's the most American? That's why I chose this particular hat. I matched the camo to the shirt. The headset just really looks good with the hat. I chose headset A with the olive drab color. Handwear, I chose the fingerless Kevlar. I think these are all around the best choice for this. There's no real reason behind that. Simply aesthetics. Now I chose the separate pack, which comes with the deluxe edition. I just think this was the best backpack. Before I had the deluxe edition though, I was using this, I was using the Y strap. Felt a little small to me if I was preparing for safari in a, in a South American drug infested country. I think I'd want to take a little more gear. That said, there's plenty of bigger backpacks to choose from. I just like the look of the sapper pack the best. 
personally. And I decided to color it forest green, just, just to give it a little contrast with some of the other greens and colors. That said, the vest, of course, is just straight black. I, I, I kind of skipped over that. Oh, yes, and patches. Let's not forget patches. Do I even have to tell you? <laughs> We've chosen American flag patch. Now, so now it's time. Let's check out the weapons, and then we're going to talk about tactics and the skills you'd want. I want to let you know how we're doing this. And I try to refine the structure of these kind of videos every week. Now let's move on to the weapons. Again, this is from massive input from you guys. I actually chose the M4A1. I had suggestions to use an ACR, but I still, I want to stick with an AR-15. It's, I think, the most iconic American assault rifle. It's the one you see the most. It's not necessarily, I'm not saying it's my favorite or it's the best, but this is a staple of American military right here is the AR-15. So let's have a look at the parts we decided to put on it. And yeah, this did have fresh paint when I started this build. I played this build a lot. All right, so let's take a look at the parts. Stock butt stock, I think that's the only choice. I chose the digital scope. Because this has no sniper rifle, we need a rifle. We need an assault rifle that can take quick close shots and quick you know, medium to long range shots. And the digital scope is really good for that because it's base zoom isn't that far zoomed in you can really take you can really acquire and make quick shots but it's 4x zoom is enough that it almost puts it a sniper rifle zoom level even though of course this is not a sniper rifle it has far more bullet drop but it still gives you the ability to make some longer shots and it's a see-through scope meaning it doesn't black out your whole screen when you pull it up you can still see your surroundings so it's a really good scope for situational awareness whether you're zoomed in far or not zoomed in I chose semi-auto burst three for the trigger and I only use semi-auto. I want to stick true to the American theme of weapons you could legally purchase and own here in America. And of course, you need some kind of ATF license or something to have full auto weapon. It's just not realistic for the average consumer. So I said, okay, I'm just going to put this on this and I only fire it in semi-auto. It makes for a nice, fun challenge. This game, you know, a lot of people turn up the difficulty. Instead of turning up the difficulty, I say just, you know, play for fun and, and make it more difficult by restricting your weapon use is what I say. So I only fire it on, on semi-auto. Simply using a 30 round magazine, you can certainly get any kind of magazine you want here in the States, but this is pretty much most common. When you go, you go to a gun show, you pick up an AR-15, they're going to have 30 round magazines there. Again, depending on what state you're in, this is a pretty common thing. For the underbarrel, I decided to choose a vertical foregrip because again, I'm just going off of most of the assault rifles I see and most people here who have customized assault rifles tend to use vertical foregrips. I picked V3 because I thought it simply looked the best with the weapon. I chose the laser three dot. Again, I'm trying to always keep in mind what's, what's available here, what would look good on the weapon. You can certainly get laser sights, but I've never ever, I personally have never seen anyone with a visible laser beam mounted on their weapon. So I went with a nice compact little three dot laser. I went with the standard barrel because I want a nice medium length carbine. I think that's what most people shoot for when they build an AR-15. It gives you good maneuverability, good marksmanship and accuracy, and it's still kind of compact and light. It's just, it's the best of all worlds. Again, not thinking about game stats, just thinking about if I were to build an AR-15 in real life, because let's say I am the American gun enthusiast because, well, I am an American and I am a gun enthusiast. That's the barrel I would pick. And I picked a suppressor because, well, this character needs a little bit of stealth and you can totally, totally pick up a suppressor for an AR-15. Hell, you could buy one on the internet. Not even a problem. All right, paints. All my weapons are black. I just wanted it nice and uh, nice and normal. So let's try to speed this up. Let's go into the shotgun. I actually started off with the Spaz 12, but after many suggestions, I switched to the Sega 12. Um, apparently, this is a more common shotgun to own. It, it really, really was a good choice. Let's have a look at the parts. It doesn't have as many parts to go over, luckily. But stock is the only choice. I am using the parts that were suggested by a viewer. I've since lost the comment. It's been lost in, in comments, but you know who you are. He suggested this build, and this works really well. We're using the panoramic sight. We're using a 10-round magazine. Sure, there's a 30 available. This is all you need. It really is all you need. The V2 foregrip looks really good and solid on this weapon. Long barrel, compensator, I think were actually my choices because, um, well, you need all the accuracy you can get out of this thing because it's not real accurate. But I can say I've made kill shots at around 100 meters with this. 
but uh, the spread's gonna affect that a little bit. But still, with the long barrel and the compensator, you can get some pretty decent accuracy. And of course, in the tactics section, I'll you know tell you how the gun enthusiast uses his weapons in combat. Now, lastly, let's look at the P12, also known as the H and K USP. This is a good all-around pistol as far as uh, pistols you would buy in America for for target practice or home defense. The USP is up there on pretty much all the charts. It's a really good, popular weapon here in the states. A lot of these uh, pistols are, but I decided to go with this one. I did originally have it with an extended mag and a suppressor. Viewer suggestion said, yeah, just put the suppressor on, it's fine. And you know, really, it is just fine with a 12 round magazine. Really, this with just the suppressor on it makes a good solid pistol for any close quarters engagement. Okay, and now let's have a look at the tactics that this character would use. Now, if you saw the video, well, I pretty much abide by the tactics in the intro video. Really, any engagement under 20 meters or so, I use the pistol. It's nice, it's quiet, it's quick, it's it's really good. And uh, this character, the tactics of this character is he plays as stealthily as possible until he decides he has the upper hand. Once he has the upper hand, then it's time to go for the shotgun. That's kind of how this character plays. Once you get to a point in the base where you know you're whittling him down or, you know, and or you're, you're being hunted, pulling this thing out is a great way to whittle down the rest of the defenses there looking for you. But until then, I use the pistol especially for all indoor engagement and anything even outdoors that's close. If they didn't see you, you're still taking them down with one shot. So it's, it's just so much better. And, you know, and you get much quicker target ac ac acquisition with a pistol, you know, just pop, pop. It's it's really, really nice. Now the M4, I say for pretty much anything over 20 meters, definitely only for outdoor kinds of shots, but you can use it for close shots and for long shots. And you can see, as, as I said, the scope's see-through. So it's really, really quick to acquire a shot with it. Really quick to acquire a shot and you can still see your surroundings. It really makes a good setup. The best way that this character uses the M4 is when you're outside, let's say you have three guys patrolling a yard, you wanna stay stealthy, so you can stealth, pop, 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 and they're all dead before anyone even knows what's going on. This is a really, really good solid weapon for that, and most people would agree that the M4A1 is one of the best assault rifles in the game. In fact, a lot of people do favor this assault rifle. The setup I have for it is maybe not optimal, but I didn't set it up to be optimal, I set it up to be realistic, to what an American gun enthusiast might well own. Although a setup like this, an AR-15 like this, let's say you know, let's say uh, let's say this was one of the top end ones, like a Bushmaster or whatever is considered like one of the best AR-15s. With these kind of add-ons, you're probably looking at about four grand. Hey, the shit ain't cheap, but a lot of people have weapons just like this. Now, as far as a shotgun, again, once you're hunted and or you feel that you can take the rest of them. There is nothing like taking down packs of enemies. You can have four guys shooting at you and just pow. Well, there's two of them down. Pow, there's two more down because of the spread. You can take down packs of enemies who are chasing you really, really quick with this weapon. And with a 10 round magazine, you really can't go wrong. Now, as far as explosives, his character definitely makes use of explosives, mostly in the way of grenades. And I like to plant C4. The whole C4 thing comes from, well, remember that movie uh, Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger? And he would like place C4 in places, then he would set it off to either, for either, you know, well, also in Predator as well, kind of he did. Um, either as like a distraction or let's say you sense that the the enemy might go for their cars Let's like let's say you're assaulting a place that has one of the rebel lieutenant uh, one of the uh, Cartel lieutenants you might see for his car just as a backup take start taking people out Suddenly you get seen he starts running for his car boom you blow his car now He has no escape kind of things like that so this character is definitely the kind of character who when they sneak into a base would be placing mines in the entrance just in case backup arrives, they might C4 some of the cars, or say there's an APC, you might throw a couple packs of C4 on that APC just in case the enemy decides to climb into it. You can go ahead and blow it and you've already got your bases covered. So this character is very tactful, very stealthy, but can also pull out some cowboy action anytime he wants with his SAS G12 semi-auto shotgun. So that pretty much covers the tactics of the American gun enthusiast. Now let's have a look at some of the skills that you might want for this character. Now, of course, I've been playing this character for some time, so she's level 30 and has all the skills, but I'm gonna tell you some of the stuff that you may or may not want. Let's have a look at these. Stable aim, actually that's not necessary whatsoever because you're not doing a lot of long distance aiming. When you are, it's probably 
mo this character is mostly quick shot acquisition. That's really not a necessity whatsoever. Grenade launcher, not, not needed for this character. She doesn't use one. He doesn't use one. Ammo capacity, you know, that's not something I really ever worried about. A couple points in that I couldn't hurt, but that's good for pretty much everyone. I did decide vehicle destruction probably isn't a bad idea for this character. I figure target practice back home with some ragtag militia. They probably use some cars as target practice. I know I've used vehicles as target practice. So there's that. Some a little a couple points in vehicle destruction. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea. Fan suppressor, that's completely up to you. This here, this is one of the essential ones I decided. Time to aim. Definitely essential. So you can get those quick, quick, quick shots with the M4. Time to aim is is an absolute necessity this character as i play him does not use a drone whatsoever i use binoculars instead and so i would definitely recommend putting your points into binoculars and binocular recon c4 not a bad idea also frag grenade these are these are two things that this character uses a lot this character doesn't use any of this other stuff though let's go have a look at physical stamina i would say stamina it's not one of the things that's required this is kind of a secondary priority this character does a lot of run and gun. It's not as hard as you think to run and be stealthy, which reminds me, quiet running and detection are two very essential things. This character is very stealthy up until the point where he decides he doesn't need to be anymore. I do a lot of running and then stealthing through the bases, and you'd be amazed what you can run past. Hell, I mean, you know, watch some of the builds from Build Week. You see me just literally rush guard towers and, and run up the stairs. They don't even see me. So these are quiet running detection are very important and stamina kind of goes along with that. Now, toughness, things like bullet resistance and whatnot, not really a big deal. I can't really say I took many shots with this character. In fact, in all the time playing this character, she only died once and was not on camera. You guys didn't see it. I was assaulting a convoy. I got out to tag the convoy and a rogue Santa Blanca trophy truck came down the road and ran over me. And that was actually this character's only death. Of course, I'm only playing on regular difficulty, but I'm saying this is not a character that gets shot a lot because if they're already onto you, then you got this bitch in your hands. And if you got this bitch in your hands, you have no excuse for getting shot. <laughs> All right, guys. So that pretty much really ties it up for this week's American Gun Enthusiast build. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you liked the video. I had a lot of fun making it. There was a lot of work because this whole week I've been not only been doing the process but recording myself doing the process and so it's been a little bit of work. Next week, obviously, I won't be doing this. The builds from now on will simply be like they were all behind the scenes but then you get to see the finished product. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you all for tuning in for build week. Now, of course, there was the contest. I will announce the winner. I haven't announced the winner yet because I'm making some last minute changes to the giveaway prize it's very much a thing when i do a giveaway i want to make sure that i uh, give away something cool and so i'm making some last minute changes to it which are still pending i'm still waiting to hear back from uh from some people so as soon as that's done i will announce the winner of this week's giveaway thank you all so much for participating for watching for viewing for hanging out and for all your suggestions of course because your suggestions are what help make this character guys it's been a real pleasure until next time I'm Dark Dally, and I will see you guys later.